Welcome back everybody, Chris here with Venture Outside. We are off on another adventure. Hey guys, Chris here with Venture Outside. Got my first adventure of 2019 coming at you today. Uh, today we're in the beautiful Santa Cruz Mountains at Butano State Park. Uh, it's around 12.30 in the afternoon on a Sunday, so hopefully we have most of the park and the trail camp to ourselves. So without further ado, follow me along and check out the adventure. Let's go.
Hey guys, Chris here. Just want to give you guys a quick trail update. About a mile, mile and a quarter um, from the car. Um, as you can see, really beautiful. Santa Cruz Mountains is predominantly uh, redwood forest. Um, we've been spending most of our time under the canopy today. So far, um, there's some steady incline. We should probably top out around 13, 1400 feet according to the map. But yeah, it's been really nice so far. Nice and breezy, kind of cool. You can hear all the birds and not too many people. It's a Sunday, that's why I picked it. I kind of like to go on the days where, the le where there's the least amount of crowds. Uh, that's just my own particular preference. So I think we're gonna take advantage of the bench, stop, have a little water, have a little snack, and then we'll get back to it. I'll bring you guys back uh, when there's something else to see. Okay guys, so we just passed the trail intersection as you saw. So I just bumped into some other hikers and they said I'm about 2.6 to the next trail junction. And then we need to decide if we want to take a single track, which is definitely more elevation gain and more steep, or if we want to take the fire road, which I'll show you guys on the map a little bit later, but the fire road will actually take us um, through the top of the ridge with less elevation, and it'll cross through an old abandoned airstrip up at the top. So I've never seen that, so maybe we might take that way, and we will take a look at that together. So I got to keep at it. Another 2.6 to the junction, and I heard it's another 2.5 to the camp. So roughly another five miles. So got to get back at it. That is a pretty tall tree. As you guys can see, it's pretty shaded uh, on this trail. And we're still on the Jackson Flat Trail. And truthfully, it is pretty flat thus far. And it's supposed to get a little more hilly as we get to the next trail junction for the Canyon Trail or the Botano Fire Road. So we'll take a look at that uh, when we get there. Okay, we're coming up to a little boardwalk here. It's quite nice. Flowers are in bloom.
All right, guys, we have finally made it to the Canyon Trail and Jackson Flat Trail Junction. So we are gonna take the Canyon Trail and I will explain why. All right, guys, just a quick update. Been uh, keeping the camera put down. Otherwise, I'll be stopping like every 30 seconds to take a picture or film something. Um, as you saw, we just came to the Trail Junction. I uh, met up with some hikers that stayed the night at the trail camp last night and they informed me that there is running water on along the canyon trail um, up to camp. If you make it all the way to camp and didn't bring water, you got to go back down a mile and a half to get it and then go back up. So three miles round trip to get water if we head straight to the trail camp. There's no water on the Butano Fire Road, I'm told. So we are going to take the canyon trail instead. It's a little more up and down, but uh, we are going to grab some water along the way and do it in one shot. I'll probably load up the two bottles I've got, so two liters there, and fill up another pouch of two liters. So four liters total for dinner and breakfast tomorrow. Um, should be enough, and I'll probably camel up at the water source too. So we're going to keep going. Uh, this is the canyon trail cutoff that you just saw. So if we head that way, it's supposed to be another 2.7 to camp. And then, uh, yeah, it's probably about 2, 2.30 right now. Don't have my watch. It's in my pocket. I'll have to pull it out, but that's pretty close. So I'll bring you guys back when uh, there's something else to see. So, pretty amazing. We've only been walking, let's say, five minutes since the last update at the trail junction, and the terrain has really changed. We went from having redwoods and ferns and miner's lettuce and slugs on the ground to kind of a few pines and a lot of Spanish moss. So it's kind of drying out a bit. Um, which probably tells me we're heading a little higher in elevation. Thus, there's probably not as much moisture as there was down in the valley. Still beautiful, but just what a drastic change within a five minute period of walking. So, yep, we are going and we're looking for the water source. And voila, it is green again. More ferns and all sorts of vegetation, including poison oak. So just FYI, if you're gonna come out here and it's mid-April 2019 right now, um, be mindful of what you're stepping in or rubbing up against, like that. Otherwise, it's a gorgeous day. Um, higher up right now, we're probably, I'd say, low 60s. It's supposed to go down into the mid 40s tonight, so it should be nice and toasty. Got some uh, new pieces of gear to try out on this trip, and we'll see how they work out. Just a gorgeous day out here. The first view I've been able to show you guys today. It's been mainly walking in the trees and under the, uh, the cover of those redwoods on the way in. So as you can tell we're going up. Um, decently gradual. Um, it's gorgeous. A few other hikers out here. Uh, mainly day hikers. It's Sunday so a lot of folks that stayed at the trail camp last night are headed out. Bumped into a few. We're really nice folks. Okay, so I hear water, rushing water, and then I came across this, which is probably not making the sound that I'm hearing in the background. But nevertheless, I guess if you were super desperate, it could work. Not terrible, but I'm hoping that there's going to be something a little bit more flowing um, just down the trail a bit, and then we'll get filled up.
Okay, so what I'm hearing is that down there, there's a creek that's running really well. The bad part is I am way up here. And the only way to get down would be to have to scramble down the trail, which I'm probably not going to do. Um, the guys I bumped into said that there was water, um, a creek running across the trail just prior to camp, um, about 1.5 miles or a little bit before. So I'm going to continue down this way and let's see what we find. And literally as I put the camera away, we are walking up onto a water source, which is, seems to be pretty accessible. All right, time to get the pack off and fill up. Okay, so we're still on the canyon trail. We've done some uphill and we're doing some downhill switchbacks now. Uh, fil finish filtering the water. We've got four liters, a liter each in each smart bottle, and I've got an ever new two liter pouch that's filled. So yeah. We're good to go for camp. Just want to show you guys this cool rock formation here. So this is another little water source um, on the canyon trail that we've been following. I'm wondering if this is the last one before camp um, because some other hikers said that it was 1.5 miles down from the camp. So assuming that this is the last water source before we hit the trail camp, we should be within a mile and a half to the camp, which will be nice. Looking forward to setting up a new piece of gear and getting out of these trail runners and into something a little bit more comfortable that my feet air out. Okay, we've come across a clearing. Still pretty dry up here, but um, yeah, I got a nice little view. We should be almost there. I'm hopeful. Still hear a few hikers behind me. Um, I talked to the rangers, said there's supposed to be one other reservation for the trail camp tonight, so that might be those folks. Um, and yeah, probably just the two of us amongst eight different sites. So I can't wait to get there. So, I think I figured out that I could have waited on hauling all this water until now, but you never know. There's no signs up telling you. It's just all sporadic, if, depending on the rain. But this is running probably just as good as where I got my water, if not better. Um, so, that's reassuring. We're going that way. What a great water source. Highly recommended if you're going to come out here. This is mid-April 2019 and everything's still running really well. So, something to keep in mind.
All right, guys, we have made it. Okay, trail camp via the Indian Trail, 0.5 miles. It's up in that direction. And if we continue to go that way, that's the Omo Fire Road, another half a mile. Indian Trail as well. So we are gonna go straight up that way, mile till. Man, I can't wait. Looking forward to it. It's just that anticipation of getting to camp and just setting everything down for a few minutes before he gets set up. Man, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. That is perhaps the best crooked sign I've seen all day. Actually, it appears to be half a sign or... <laughs> There's part of it. Thankfully, it's still standing. And we are here. Looks like... There's been a ton of blowdowns too. I just had to climb over like three trees to get up here the last mile. Okay, so no ground fires here. That's part of the regulations. Uh, state forest, probably not gonna let you have a trail campfire. And this is a definite no in this case. Um, there's a huge blowdown. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. Um, it's just kind of crazy. Um, the ranger told me that they don't really maintain it very much. And that would be a true statement. Camp 7 and 8. I think we're going to go to 8, because I read online, and I'll have to link those blog posts that I read to make this video, or that kind of gave me the idea behind coming to Butano State Park. But I think Site 8 and Site 1 were some of the flattest, I heard. And I think Site 8 according to what I read, has its own furniture, like pre-made wood furniture. So, I wouldn't call it great furniture, but yeah. There's a flat wood thing over here. I can lay down my gear, make dinner. A couple of stumps with some interesting growth on it. I'm no expert. I wish uh, if Andrew with Adventure Archives was here, he could probably tell me what type, what type of fungus this is. All in all, pretty nice sight couple of flat spots here. Right there is pretty flat for my tent. Or right there. So we'll have to see. It's a pretty nice sight. Okay, I think this is going to be it. All sites come with a uh, food locker, bear box, to store all your food. Yeah, I think this will work. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get set up, take my shoes off, have some water, kind of regroup for a little bit, and I'll bring you back when I get set up. All right, guys. Finally made it to camp. Uh, got my shoes off. Got something a little more comfortable on. Rest my feet. i um, kind of been unpacking my pack a little bit. going to get a little organized. Got my cook kit. Uh, my four liters of water. Um, headlamp. Rain jacket. Not that I'm hoping I'll need that. Uh, my food bag, and I'm going to make a quick, uh, what is this, a liquid IV hydration multiplier. My wife gets these at Costco, and she said they're pretty good, so I think I'm going to give one a shot, mix up a bottle, and kind of get my electrolytes right. I did set up my new piece of gear for this year, and that is, new to me at least, it's the Helinox Chair 1. I know the Chair 0 is one pound, um, but I'm a bigger guy. So um, I've been doing my research online. A lot of other YouTubers like that Helinox Chair 0. I know I've been following like Bryce Newbold or the Shill Brothers Outdoors. But this one supposedly holds 320 pounds. It only weighs two pounds. And I guess I could probably trim the weight back a bit if I didn't pack in the zippered pouch that it comes in. Just put the legs and the material in my pack, 
which is probably what I'll do. But I've been carrying around the, the Helinox Sunset chair around last season. It was three pounds, but let me tell you, totally worth it at the end of the day, just sitting back in a nice chair, not on a rock, not on a log, just something nice and comfortable. So definitely an indispensable piece of gear. So I'm gonna mix up some of this drink and relax for a bit. And I'll bring you back when I have the shelter set up and my sleep system. Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a little bit, just been kind of resting and getting something to eat and drink and truthfully just resting. Uh, it's just really nice. I kind of walked around the camp a bit, um, checked out some of the other sites. Uh, I'm the only one here out of eight sites. I'm the only one, and it is a Sunday evening, so I'm assuming a lot of people have to work on Monday, which is why I've kind of got it all to myself. So, I've got the shelter set up. That's my 2015 Z Pax Duplex. Nice flat spot I've got here. Got it all staked out. And trying for the first time tonight with my REI Dividend, I got the Thermarest Neo Air Uber Light. Um, this is the large, so it's 12 ounces total. Uh, it'll be my first night trying it out. And uh, yeah, get this guy blown up and get it into the tent. So I can get my quilt in there and kind of let that fluff up for a bit. And yeah, just relax and not going to lie, enjoying the chair quite a bit. Been resting my feet up there and just kicking back, listening to the sound of the trees. It's really nice. Uh, temperatures dropped down a little bit, I can tell, and that, and I'm not moving around anymore. So I think I'm going to go put on my uh, down puffy here shortly, just to kind of, you know, maintain my core temperature. I can feel my hands getting a bit chilly. Um, but the benefit of having colder temperatures is we don't have any mosquitoes, which is a benefit. All right, well, I'm gonna continue to get my camp chores done and throw on a puffy and get warmed up a bit. But uh, yeah, I'll bring you guys back in a bit uh, when we do some uh, pre-dinner appetizers. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get my pre-dinner appetizer started, at least at the very least rehydrating. Um, takes about an hour, I find, to rehydrate this. Um, yeah, packet gourmet cheddar jack cheese spread, and it says bring your own crackers. And look what we have there. Probably a little overkill. I don't know. I just threw an extra roll in there. Never know. Same thing with my food. I normally pack pretty decently for an overnight. But uh, I normally bring a little bit extra just in case. can always bring it back to the car. No biggie. So I'm going to get that started. And uh, yeah, I'll be ready to enjoy that uh, after it reconstitutes in about an hour. All right, guys, got everything all set up. The Uber lights uh, inflated. I got my uh, z uh, 20 degree solo quilt in the long broad uh, version. Uh, that's fluffing up. And then my Nemo Philo Elite is blown up. And uh, yeah, ready to go. Changed out of my hiking clothes. Those are hopefully gonna dry out a little bit. And yeah, just uh, enjoying the quiet. Um, some other campers did show up, so we do have other folks, but I think they're all the way at the end. Um, this is Camp 8 where we're at. Um, I think they're at Site 1, which is all the way down there. Um, they came down here and said hello and told me that I snagged arguably the best spot in the whole trail camp. So, yeah, real nice people. But, yeah, I'm glad we left the car when we did to get here when we did. Um, it's about 5.20 right now, so, and it is has, it has gotten cold. Um, that and I'm not really moving around a whole lot. Um, yeah, definitely still loving the chair. But yeah, it's going really well. Just relaxing, uh, drank a little more water, and I think our cheese bread is almost done. So get ready to have our uh, pre dinner appetizers. So I must say, it didn't look like much when I first got into camp, but this little bench um, combined with my Helinox chair makes it's at perfect height for a little table. And I think that's where I'll be enjoying my meal tonight. 
So yeah, I'm gonna dig into this. Um, looking forward to it. Been finally getting a little bit hungry. Wasn't hungry earlier, but uh, yeah. Okay, appetizers are done. I'm gonna get my dinner going because it is getting dark and I just wanna kinda finish with dinner and get everything put up. Uh, tonight I'm gonna be trying the Cuban chicken and lime rice bowl by Outdoor Pantry. Uh, looked at, saw one of their meals, um, I think from Spagiver Backpacking, and it looked pretty good. So I went on their site and ordered a few. Um, the owner, Debbie, was really kind. Um, in addition to the two meals I order, she actually threw in an additional dinner for me. So that was super nice of her. Uh, anyhow, I am going to get this water boiling, and let's get this cooked up. Looks pretty good, and it only takes three quarters of a cup of water. And pro tip, always remo remove the desiccant packets. Those probably don't taste too good. So, water is almost boiling. Maybe not close. Eh, a few bubbles. We are in no hurry. Just want to get dinner going, because I am a bit tired. I've still got a little bit of sunshine. I don't know if you guys can see it um, with the camera and all, but yeah, temperature is dropping, and uh, yeah, what a great day. Perfect weather. Pretty much got the camp all to myself, and uh, it's been great so far. Sorry for the fogged up lens, guys. Had to use uh, one of my socks to uh, touch the handles of my pot. It got really hot. Okay, I'm gonna go stir this up and zip it up. Gotta tell you, this is my first time trying this food. And it looks and smells great, and the consistency is nice. Can't wait. I'm gonna dig in. Also got a cup of hot uh, peach ginger tea. That'll feel good going down, since it's kinda chilly out. You can see the tea bag tag is kinda <laughs> moving around as well, so it's a little breezy. All right guys, I'm gonna eat my dinner, and I'll get back with you guys. All right, guys, it's about a quarter to eight and got everything all cleaned up at camp. Um, went and used the privy and uh, brushed my teeth and all that stuff. And I think I'm getting ready to turn in. Pretty tired. I think I'm going to lay in the uh, tent for a bit and do a little bit of reading and then uh, probably pass out. So I'm going to call it here for uh, day one. Pretty successful. Um, about six and a half miles. I'll show you guys the map in the morning and we'll go over the specific segments and... Uh, the mileage for each segment but yeah overall I feel really good um, got enough to eat got plenty of hydration uh, I'm gonna get ready to uh, get to bed and I'll get back with you guys in the morning good night good morning everybody it's about 635 just uh, rolling out um, slept really well um, super warm got down to about I think the about 43 44 last night and I was toasty just long sleeve t-shirt and a 20 degree quilt I'm still on the fence about the thermal rest uber light uh, I'm a bigger guy so I might need to let a little more air out it just seemed like a little too bouncy for my taste and the material just a little squeaky um, not so much that crinkly sound like we've heard on other reviews of the X light or the X therm but I'm going to give it a shot, do a couple more outings, see what I think. 
Um, if not, then I'll have to change it up. But yeah, not bad. It was decently comfortable. I mean, and it, it insulated me pretty well for a, an R value of two on the pad. So it wasn't cold at all from underneath in the ground. So I think we're going to get coffee boiling and get some breakfast going. And then I'll show you guys the uh, map and the route back that we're going to take to the car. Okay guys, just want to show you the route. So yesterday we got to the visitor center. We parked and we took the Jackson Flat Trail all the way here to the Canyon Trail intersection. We took the Canyon Trail, stopped and got our water, and Canyon Trail all the way to the Indian Trail. And from Indian Trail, one mile up to the trail camp. So today, I think we are going to take the Butano Fire Road back, because I've never taken that, and i still got two liters of water, which is probably more than plenty to get back to the car since it's mostly downhill. We're going to take the Butano Fire Trail out of camp, and we're going to check out the abandoned landing field. Um, I've never seen it before, so that'll be interesting. We'll follow the Butano Fire Trail around all the way to this trail junction, back with the Jackson Flat Trail. And then we'll take that downhill all the way back to the car. So should be a nice, easy um, fire road back. It's not my preferred um, way of hiking. I prefer single track just because the scenery is better and it's just not, I guess it's not as industrial as a fire road, but I get why they have them. So, alrighty, I am pretty much packed up here. Just got to put on my shoes, packs all packed, camp is all cleaned up, and definitely leave no trace, and uh, yeah, swap a camera battery out, and we'll be on our way. Alright, I'll bring you guys back when we have something to see. Okay, we are just on our way out of camp. Okay, so we came from that way yesterday from the Indian Trail, and we are going to head through camp, and the Butano Fire Road is up at the top. Hmm, 
got excited for a second. Thought there might be a trash can here, but no trash collection in this area. Please pack out all trash, which we are doing. And here's the privy I was telling you guys about. Nothing fancy, but Shore Beats uh, digging a hole and squatting over it. That's for sure. Not sure what this is. I don't know if it's a storage thing or if anybody knows what that is, feel free to put that in the comments. I'd be very uh, excited to know what that is. Looks like there's a pipe down there that goes into it at one time, or still does. Very interesting. So if you guys are planning on coming out here with a hammock, highly recommend Camp One. Uh, went out there yesterday after dinner, and there was nobody out there, and there are tons of trees, and I love hammocking. I mean, I don't mind sleeping on the ground, but I can definitely tell that there's a different quality of sleep and comfort with my hammock versus sleeping on the ground. And that probably has to do with me turning 40 years old this year too. So I'm going to start looking for more trail camps that have trees for hammock camping. Okay. As promised, this is the Butano Fire Road. And then this sign says, Trail to Entrance Road. So we're going to be heading in that direction. And there's Camp 1 that I was telling you guys about. You can probably make out the bear box right there. Tons of trees. You're really close to the fire road, but it doesn't see much, you know, truck traffic unless they're maintaining the trail camp. And depending on what time you get here, it's probably going to be pretty quiet on the trail. So, just a thought. Definitely going to be staying here next time with my hammock. So it doesn't look like they get a lot of truck traffic um, on this fire road. Probably a good thing. Not a lot of ruts and definitely a lot of down branches and... on the lookout for that abandoned landing strip. See if that's worth taking a look at. These views keep on getting better and better. I think we're pretty much at the top here. And then we're gonna start heading down. Beautiful Monday morning in the Santa Cruz Mountains, Butano State Park. Gorgeous view. So, we didn't really have to look for it. The trail, which we came from right there, crosses the abandoned landing strip. 
trail goes that way. And I'm guessing that was the tower facility at one time, or there's still some solar panels. Maybe we'll go down there and check it out. But yeah, I thought we were going to have to look, but it's right here. I don't know. I have a few close friends that were pilots, um, single engine. I'm wondering if you could still land on this in its current condition. Uh, let me know in the comments. I think we're going to go down and check out what that little building is with the solar panels. There's obviously some tower and looks like they've removed some of the equipment from it. We'll go check it out. All right. Looks like it's still in use. There's a camera uh, mounted midway, pointed at us. And the wood on the roof looks relatively new as well as the solar panels. Legion of the Space Commandos. Hmm, not sure what that is. Um, I guess Walter was here. I'll let you guys interpret that. Um, yeah, I guess it's probably some type of weather monitoring station or radio, little radio tower or something. Definitely locked up and yeah, very cool. All the hiking we've been doing out here, this is probably one of the largest stretches of flat ground I've seen. All right. Well, that was interesting. Never seen it before, and now that I can say that I have. Sun is starting to rise. It's about quarter to eight. And yeah, we're going to get back on the Jackson Flat Trail here, or no, the Butano Fire Road, excuse me. And we're looking for the junction for the Ox Mill Trail junction. That'll take us back to the Jackson Flat Trail. All righty, we're going to keep at it. Okay, making good progress. It's been mostly downhill, which is much appreciated. We did all our heavy lifting uphill yesterday, but the views are really nice. A few clouds in the sky. Pretty cool out here. I would say low to mid 50s. Yeah, super comfortable. Still wearing my shorts and just my hiking shirt um, and a base layer underneath. So quite comfortable. Not cold at all. And yeah, we've been uh, about 8.30, so been moving pretty well. Feeling good. Breakfast was good. I uh, can't wait to get back to the car. Check that out, straight ahead, there's a house overlooking the valley, right there. Must be one awesome view. And the trail still keeps on coming down, so making nice effortless progress.
All right, more beautiful views. They're just endless. All right, so we're coming up on a trail junction. Hopefully this is our trail for the ox mill. Looks like there's a sign right there. Making pretty good time and as to be expected when it's literally all smooth downhill, it's just nice and easy. Trail to Entrance Road. And Jackson Flats Trail, which is what we want. No dogs or bikes. All right. We are making great progress. So I think it's roughly a little bit less than two and a half to the car. And then we'll be done. All right, let's get going. So we just had some good steep downhill to get to this point and it says trail to the right and there's another trail sign to the right. I'm guessing it used to go down that way but it's kind of eroded so we are going to go that way. Okay so we're still on the ox mill connector trail, we've got a nice little water source here. I'd fill up, but I still have about a liter and a half, which is going to be more than plenty to get me to the car. But it's nice to see water is flowing. Okay, we're at the trail junction from, I believe that's the Ox Mill Trail, but they've been calling it the Jackson Flats. It says Ox Mill on the map. This is where we were yesterday. Um, that way is the start of the Canyon Trail, which we took all the way to the Indian Trail to get to trail camp. And that way is back to the car. So I think it's roughly 2.5. I know I said it was a little less than 2.5 earlier, but I'm pretty sure this is about 2.5. Uh, back the other way. So we are almost there. We're getting closer back to the car, guys. It's getting a little muddier, like it was yesterday. Kind of cool, they've got these wood boardwalk pavers. Saw a little bit of it yesterday when I came through, but turned the camera off because there were hikers that I was talking to and didn't necessarily know if they wanted to be in the video. It's kind of cool that we saw that red newt earlier based on what the camp, the park brochure says is those guys are typically only out through February. So it's kind of cool to see one. That was the only one I've seen. I've seen several banana slugs though. They're everywhere. There was even one on my shoe this morning. I had to coax them off. We're almost there, guys. I've kind of spared you some of the walk back to the car footage since you saw it on the way in yesterday. Um, different light and different perspective, though, so. 
but yeah, we're almost there. Okay, we are back to the slippery when wet boardwalk. Anybody else a Bon Jovi fan? My wife's a huge fan. She'll probably get a kick out of this sign. Man, tons of spider webs this morning. I've been literally eating them and catching them with my face. All right. I see the parking lot. So, a little course correction. We turned off on the Jackson Flat trailhead from the Botano Fire Road. Um, we could have kept on going on that fire road to the Ox Mill Trail, which was further down. So, slight navigation error. Regardless, uh, we ended up in the same spot. Um, we left camp at 7.30. It's about 10.15, 10.20 right now. So, yeah, about three and a half hours to hike back to the car, opposed to four and a half to hike up to the camp. And I'll bring you back when we get to the car, and uh, we'll close it out from there, I think. Okay, guys, we are back at the car. Got my post-hike change of clothing. Got my shoes off. It feels great. Uh, give me a second here and we'll sign off. All right guys, I'm all changed into my clothes. Got about a three and a half hour drive, so I gotta get going. But I wanna thank everybody for coming along on the adventure. Um, please like, comment, subscribe if you already haven't. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Alright guys, just on the way out uh, from the park, stopped in Pescadero, and you definitely want to stop at RN Jelly Grocery, also Norm's Market. They've been here since 1929, and hands down, they make the best artichoke bread around. Um, every time we're in the area or I swing by to do backpacking, I always pick a loaf up. My wife loves it. We love it. Definitely got to stop. Highly recommended.